Settings and CapCut for Desktop, specifically the PC flavor. For most software and apps, we may never even look at the settings, much less make changes. But when it comes to video editors, looking at the settings and adjusting them to suit your workflow is really important. This isn't just a cap cut thing, it's every video editor I've ever used. Tuning in the settings can save you a lot of headaches later and prevent you from wasting a lot of time trying to hunt down and fix problems. In CapCut, we have platform settings and we have project settings. First, let's look at the CapCut settings that apply to the whole platform and all of your projects. There's two ways that you can get to the settings in CapCut. From the home page, you can click on this little nut icon up at the top and then click settings. And that opens up the settings menu. But you can also get to the settings menu from within a project in the workspace here. And to do that, you just come up and click menu and then come down and click settings. It's the same settings menu either way you get to it. There's only one thing I've found that you can't do if you access the settings from within the workspace, and I'll show you that when we get there. So we come into menu, we drop that down, we'll click settings, and you have some options here that you're probably gonna wanna make a change to. So the first tab is draft, and this is where you're gonna be saving your drafts and where you're going to be downloading your materials. So take a look at where CapCut by default has set these things to go and adjust that to where you want them to be. I would recommend that you have one specific folder that you're starting with where you do all your video editing in, and then within that folder, maybe you have a separate folder for each project, maybe not, but at least you have one central place where you're gonna start with for all your video editing projects. Now, CapCut might have picked a place that's really good for this right off the bat, but you might want to change that as well. I changed mine to an external hard drive that I have. You can set your cache to either never delete, I would not do that, or to auto delete after so many days. What I have is 15 days. I think that's the default. And it will show you down here what your cache size currently is. Mine is at 4.99 gigabytes. I'm cool with that. If I wanted to delete it right now, I can by just clicking this trash can. Now, the cache isn't going to make your project disappear or anything like that. It will make it oh, run a little slower when you first open it up because it's got to regenerate all those things that it needs. It's storing these pieces in cache in a smaller file size that's readily accessible right now. So it makes your whole workflow a little bit faster and makes things just fly along a little better. You can also decide whether you want to auto upload. And if you turn the auto upload on, then what it will do is all the projects that you're creating, it will automatically upload those to your CapCut space. Then you'll be able to access and work on them from the website or from your iPhone or Android applications. The next spot we've got is edit. The, the number of frames that you um, step forward and the adjust value increments and these things and even the image duration, you probably don't need to fool with those unless you're finding that it's a problem for you. I think for most people, this would be just fine. What the image duration is saying is that when you drop an image into the CapCut editor, when you drop it on your timeline, how long by default do you want that image to be? You you can, of course, stretch it out longer or shorten it up, but if you drop a picture on your timeline, by default, you want it to take up, in my case, five seconds, and I think that's the default as well. If you know that you definitely, like, you're totally into retention editing and you would never let an image stay on there for five seconds, you never want it more than three, you can go ahead and change this to three in here. That way, when you drop an image on the timeline, it'll be on for three seconds and you won't have to cut it back from five. Target loudness, you can set. I have it at the default of minus 23. You can set it to minus 14 for YouTube or 12 for TikTok. And remember, we're working in minuses here. So negative 23 is quieter or a lower volume than minus 14. Minus 14 is lower than minus 12. And this box, the arrange layers box is very important by default, this is going to be off, and if you want to turn it on, you will have to come into settings and change it, and this is what allows you to arrange your layers to not be completely anchored by that main track 
thing. So if you want to be able to arrange these things and move something on top of something else and that sort of thing, you need this turned on. So that is a definite, definite turn on. I don't know why the default is that you can't do that. Maybe it's just me, but I can't edit that way at all. I've never seen another video editor that works that way. So thank goodness they give us the option to turn this on and be able to arrange layers. Your frame rate, I have mine at 30 frames per second. You can change it to anywhere from 24 to 60. I think 30 is just the place to be. For time codes, you can adjust the formatting. This You probably don't need to touch this, but if you need your uh, time code to be something different than hour, minute, second, uh, plus the frame, then you, know, you can adjust that here. And lastly, you can check this box if you want it to send a notification sound when an export is complete. I have no necessity for that, so we'll turn that off. Under performance, these are some pretty important settings that you want to consider. I have both boxes checked here for speed up hardware encoding and decoding, so that uh, allows it to, allows my GPU to work faster, and also render interface with GPU. So I want it to use my GPU for everything that it's doing as much as it can. The GPU is meant for this kind of work for video editing and, and making and that sort of stuff. So I definitely want to take advantage of that. Proxy is another option. I don't know that this one is on by default, but you definitely want to have this turned on. And how proxies work is when you add a clip and a cap cut and it's two gigabytes, you know, at 1920 by 1080. Proxy will make a copy of that in a lower resolution in a compressed smaller file. So you'll be seeing the lower resolution, lower quality image in your preview window, but it's making all the, the changes that you're making, it's making those to the main file. It's just not adjusting them right in front of you on the screen and using up your computer's resources to show it to you nice and pretty. But in the background, it's the nice and pretty one that's getting edited. So that makes the, the whole thing move faster, less lagging, less issues all the way around. So I highly recommend that you turn proxy on. And when you do that, you'll need to indicate a place where you want to save proxies to. Or if you're happy with what CapCut has picked, as is my case, you can leave them there. I am never looking for those proxy files or working with them at all. It's just CapCut is able to do that on the side without me being involved. You can select your sound output. In my case, I have my output going to my uh, Wavelink, uh, which is an Elgato thing that uh, comes along with the Stream Deck that allows me to uh, route my audio sources. But you can pick any audio, so you know, speakers, whatever you have. You can adjust that wherever you want. You have a section here of uh, where you want the rendering cache to be stored. Unless you're having problems, wherever CapCut decided to put this is probably just fine. Unless it's, you know, try to put it on some kind of cloud drive or something, and you would probably notice some issues. You can delete your proxies anytime you want, and you can delete your rendering cache as well if you want to clean that up. And I have this one set, I have my rendering cache set to auto clear at 10 gigabytes. So when it gets to 10, it cleans up and we move on. Oh, and remember how I said there was one thing that you couldn't do from within the settings if you access it through the workspace menu? Well, here it is. If you want to manually delete your proxy files or you want to manually delete your rendering cache, you can't do that while you're inside a project. Why? Because the project may have some of those files open and deleting them while it's using them would cause a problem. But never fear, you can just go back to the home page, click the nut icon, and delete those proxies and rendering cache. On. And then auto render allows CapCut to automatically render the part of the video that you're looking at, that you're trying to preview, so that it's just a much smoother experience than trying to work, work, work all through the timeline, and then say, okay, render, and then have it have to go through and render everything. And rendering is a process in video editing where it's taking all these changes that you've indicated in your display in the interface there. It's taking all those changes and now it's got to sort of assemble that all together into what a video file is going to look like. The last page is the easiest one. Pick your language. Hopefully you don't have any trouble with that. Sometimes I do. And there you go. Now let's talk about project settings. Project settings are specific to a project and these are not applied globally across the whole platform to all projects. Now to see what your project settings are, when you're in your workspace, you have a project open here and you're in your workspace, look over here on this panel on the right, which is usually where our properties are, and you'll see details at the top. If you don't, if you see something else up here, 
For instance, if it looks like this, that's because you have something selected on your timeline. So just click anywhere in your timeline that isn't selecting something, not on an object. Click anywhere in the blank space, and then the details will pop up. And this is showing you details for your project. If you want to change anything in here or see what your options are, just click this modify button at the bottom. Now you'll get the project settings screen. You have two tabs here. You have details and performance. The first thing we have here is the project name. If you want to change that, just click in here and type whatever you want it to be. Next is the location where the project will be saved. This is the working location for drafts. When you want to export your video, you can choose any location you want, regardless of what's typed in here. Now, even though the save to location is displayed here, you can't change it here. You'll need to go back to the general settings that we just talked about. The next thing you have here is a decision about how you want your imported media to be handled. You can choose on a project by project basis whether to copy media into the project or have it stay in its original location. There's pros and cons here both ways. If you choose stay in original location, then when you import a clip, CapCut will just make note of where that clip lives and access it from that location for your project. It keeps you from having duplicate copies of the same video, image, or sound files filling up your computer and prevents any confusion with having multiple copies of the same exact file. But if you import a clip of video, image, or music you want to use in your project, and then you end up renaming, moving, or deleting that clip from its original location, CapCut will not know where to find it and won't be able to include it in your project anymore. Instead, you'll see this big red box placeholder that says, I can't find this, where did it go? If you choose Copy Media to Project, then every time you import something, a video clip, image, music, or whatever into CapCut, it'll make a copy of that file and store it in your project folder on your computer. Everything you see in your media panel under device will be stored in that one place. That's handy if, for example, you're using clips that are in your downloads folder and you might end up deleting, moving, or deleting them later, but before the project is complete. The downside is that you'll be taking up more space on your computer and you might have trouble figuring out what's what at some point because you have multiple copies of the same file living on your computer. Next is the aspect ratio of the project, and the two most common are going to be the 16 by 9 for your typical landscape normal videos, and then the 9 by 16 for vertical videos. We have lots of other options there if you need something very specific. Resolution by default is set to adapted. You can drop this down and switch it to custom and put in your own resolution if you so desire. I'm happy with adapted, which is going to conform the resolution to the aspect ratio. That works just fine for me. Then we have frame rate, which mine is set at 30 frames per second. And the frame rate, remember video is made up of a bunch of individual images. And the frame rate is the number of individual images per second. So the higher the frame rate, generally the smoother the video, the lower the frame rate, it might be a little bit more choppy. I prefer 30, but CapCut gives you plenty of options ranging from 24 to 60. If you're recording videos, you'll know what your frame rate is, or you can find it in your camera and then set the frame rate within CapCut to match that. There's no benefit to setting a higher frame rate in your video editing software than what your camera is shooting at. If you're using all stock media for your projects, you might want to see what frame rate those assets are in, and also consider the type of video that they are. If you have something with a lot of action that's really fast-paced, you might want a higher frame rate. But if it's not, if it's slight movement and not a lot of action, even if you're getting that asset at 60 frames per second, you'd probably be okay to use a smaller frame rate here and therefore have smaller file sizes to work with. The next option here is color space, and color space defines how colors will be encoded and displayed and the range of colors that will be used in the video. This is a whole complex subject and it's way beyond what we're here for, so if you understand color spaces and you want to make changes for your project, this is where you do it. If you don't know what these color spaces are, 
you're probably safe to just leave it right where it is. The last thing on the project settings page is the arrange layers option. If this is off, you won't be able to arrange layers, meaning moving something from the back to the front uh, in your video or the bottom to the middle in your video tracks. That main layer will be stuck and limit what you can do with your video. If you turn this on, you'll be able to move the tracks around. Once you turn this on, you cannot turn it back off, but I can't imagine why anyone would want to be constrained by the inability to move a track above or below another. So that's on for me and always will be. On the performance tab, we only have two options, proxy and resolution. With proxy turned on, CapCut will make a lower quality copy of your video clips for you to work with in your project. This only affects the preview of your project, what you're seeing in the editor workspace, not the final output. If you turn proxies on, you can then select a proxy resolution. For example, if you have a video that's 1080p and you turn on proxies and set the resolution to 720, CapCut will use a 720 version of your clips for your preview and workspace. But when you export, it'll be at 1080. But by using the lower quality for editing and previewing, it takes up a lot less resources on your computer and makes editing a lot faster. Now, if your project is going to be exported at 1080 and you set your proxy resolution to 720, and then one of your clips you import happens to be 720 or less, CapCut won't bother to make a proxy for that video because it's already at the resolution you've set for proxies. I hope you found this helpful. If there's anything about CapCut or any other content creator tools that you'd like to learn how to do, please leave me a comment and let me know. If you don't have CapCut yet, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means I may receive a small commission if you end up purchasing something. You don't have to. Hey, go try the free. It might do everything you need. And I certainly appreciate it when folks do use my affiliate links. If you want to keep going exploring CapCut with me, Watch this video right here.